Uh, first, I need to apologize for rage quitting for my last section. So today you're going to combo of fillet edge, chamfer, and cross section profiles. And I need to get a grasshopper for that, but I can go grab that later. So let's say if I want to do a shoe, and I'll be the first to admit I really don't like using radius edge or fillet edge in this program. It's one of the weaker portions of it. But if I'm doing something simple like the sole of a shoe, I can go through two routes. Surface, I can do fillet surface. Click my two that I want to change, and that's eh, too tight in that section. So let's change this to 0.5. Okay. So all my geometry looks pretty normal. That's pretty simple. If I wanted a radius of one and a half on the front, that's great. It can work that out, but it doesn't work so well for the geometry in the back. So if you want to do a variable fillet, this is how you do it. I'm going to start off with, let's start with my, my smaller unit, so 0.5, because I know that's going to work between this guy and this guy. And from here, I want to add handles. So the back can stay at 0.5. I want to have this insole drop down to maybe 0.25. Give it some spaces. And then I'm going to go back up to 1.5 at the top and drop down to 1 around the outside edge. Preview. Which is nice. So that that checks out. Now it didn't trim. Maybe I didn't hit the uh, the button on it. But I don't I don't want it to go back and do all that. So let's. Can I redo that command? Would that bother anybody? Okay. So I have my my edge that I want, but either I didn't trim or or something dumb. Maybe I can trim outside of that command, so I'm going to split this object with my trim, and it worked. Good deal. A little funky. Let's get rid of that. There's a little bit easier way to do it. Like that's if you want to do surfaces. So if this guy wasn't capped, I'd have to use from the surface drop down menu. But if it is a solid, I can pull from the solids menu. And using the same options, so solid, play edge. We'll start with my smaller one, 0.5, around the back. Go to 1.5. Oops. Add handle. Got to add the handle. There's my 0.5. Change this to. 0.75 here. So there we go. Similar. I think that works out okay. That's the easiest way to do a filleted edge, and that's how you get different uh, radiuses along one line. Let's try something a little. A little different. Let's pull out a cube and use this for demonstration purposes. With that one, we just had one line to account for. I just want a real cube this time. So let's click a cube. 10 by 10 by 10. Okay. This will work. So let's go to... We know that these guys work, but since we have a solid, I'd rather pull from the solid menu. Let's do a fillet edge. What if everybody was a 0.75? How would my look be? Okay, that's fine, and that's easy to do. But let's start giving it different inputs. I want this line to be 0.75. I want the next one to be 1, and the next one to be 3. And that didn't check out. Kind of want to bl blame it on the weakness of this command of the program. But three, three, 
add a handle and 0.5. Oh, you asked me to add a handle in between. I'm not ready for that yet. 0.5, 3, or 2. Messing it up. Come back in. That one's 5. This one's 2. This one's 3. There we go. A little bit weird. Let's change the render view so you can see. It's a little funny. But I think it'll work out all right. So let's take this a little bit further. Go back to my shaded view. Let's run chamfer this time. Same operation. That one can be one. My next one can be three. This one now can be, I don't know, one and a half, 1.52, whatever. And it's nice because it does all the geometry for you, so you don't really think about it as much. But let's say I want these guys to join up, but then I'd like to adjust um, my rounded edge midway. Same stuff. Let's start off at f let's start off at one. This can be one, one, and one. And now I'm going to want to add handles in between the lines. Let's put a handle of two there and there, and another one of three here. Let's see what happens. Intriguing. What? Because you don't carry a curve consistently all the way across, you're going to start getting these dips as it fades from a smaller radius to a larger radius. Can you tell us these phantom surface I have on the edge? They pop up from time to time. I hope, and I'm pretty convinced this is part of the graphics or rendering software, because when you export, if you can't click on it in any Anyway, then it doesn't exist, so you don't have to worry about it. I think that's all I really want to touch on for chamfered edge and filleted edge. Not my favorite things, but if you want to use them, try to use them early on. It's about the safest way. Now, what did I say about a grasshopper earlier? No, let's not do grasshopper. Let's do a dragonfly. Let's tell my students that there's easy wa easier ways to do organic shapes than just to build them up. And what I've been coming across lately is what if I want an organic shape that is kind of reversed and more angular, more geometric? I think it's a side view. Yes, yes. How about this guy? A little morbid, but. Let's do my desktop. Dragons. And y'all learned how to do this command last week. Let me get a uh, front view. View, background, bitmap. I'm going to place this dragonfly in this view. All right, that'll work. So what I'm going to want to do is, I want to make this, it's like a fuselage, right? And then an extruded cylinder that kind of tapers off. I'm going to show you a, not cheap way, but a faster way of getting this shape instead of having to guess. And then move or deform a sphere. So that's the top curve. That scorpion tail, it's awesome. And I know his head's different, so I'd come back and do this, his head in a different um, approach. But I have a curve on top, a curve on bottom. And I could go back and grab a top view. But for the sake of time, I want to just kind of guesstimate. 
And I can come back and edit these control points later if I'm not wild about them. Take these guys and drag them into place. That looks weird. Is it lined up correctly? So that guy should be close to the body, a little bit closer. All right. Let's set a shaded view so we see what's going on here. Okay, so it's three curves. We'll make one more. I'm just mirror that over. All right. Prepare to be amazed, everybody. Amazed. Mr. Amazing. Curve cross-section profiles. It's going to take the profile curves that I give it. You might get away with three. I don't know the maximum is, but I typically use four, so you can use them orthographic views. I'm going to pick them either clockwise or counterclockwise. And from this point on, I can start dragging circles across. So for more detail, I can put these lines closer to one another. For less detail, I can space them out. Cross-section profiles. So you kind of see the shape that I've built up already? Can anybody guess what I'm fixing to do? Yeah, that's it, loft it. Now, I don't want to just willy-nilly pick them. I need to make sure they're in, this, in the same order that I either created them or how I want it lofted. Because if I start just going back and forth, I'm going to get a, a loft that looks crazy. That's interesting because my top curve dipped down. I'll get a, a V shape. All right, everybody's rotating their correct direction. There we go. So instead of guessing and deforming, you can just come here, make your cross-section profiles, and extrude it. it. This is kind of a straight object, but if I wanted to, I want to get my orthographic views back really fast by holding my shift button. Copy paste. I want to put a bend on this tail. Transform bend from here over. So I'm going to do the same thing, except I don't want to keep on having like north and south or vertical cross section profiles. I'm going to, since I'm making a spine by default, I need to select these in order. All right, one, two. Three, four. And then I can start making this, but I want to curve as the body of the dragonfly curves. I messed that up. It's okay. Does that work for me? It did. Yay. That's how you do a curve object. It's not, it's great for stuff that has one line or like one axis. Because if I wanted to do, let's say, yes, let's do bunny ears. Mirror that over. And I'll come in here and draw a side profile. Can I get these in vertical? I put them in the wrong way. Rotate. Now they're sideways. Rotate again. There we go. So I'll come into my front view. Make the front of oh, these adorable little ears.
rotate it in position. Mirror it over. All right, so I should be able to do cross-section profile on these, right? Wrong. Let me show you why. My fronts and my sides. See what happens. One, I'm pretty sure I didn't pick these in the right direction. So this is why I'm getting this nest up inside. If you want to do two things that have two axes along them, I'm going to split this one. I'll use a point to split it with. Midpoint, that'll work. Split this guy with the midpoint very well. And now we can come inside and do cross section profiles. One, I gotta split that one too, don't I? You need, you can't have two, you gotta have four, or you're gonna get that figure eight configuration that I didn't want. All right, that'll work as a midpoint split with that. One, two, three, four. And now I'll have inputs that I can work with. Why is it not working at the bottom? Because I need to come through right here instead of lower. So you can't do an entire object unless it's along one axis or I guess it'd be kind of revolvable at that point. But it's definitely helpful if you need to speed up, make an organic object, and just have your orthographic views. Close off not going to work because I believe it's going to dive back on in the inside. Yep, it dove back down. So if I wanted to uh, messing up, it's okay. So if I wanted to add a cap on this. You don't want to say the cap command is we get a, a flat top, so we're going to patch the upper portion. Preview. Well, that's nice. So now that I have one bunny ear, I can just mirror it over and have two bunny ears. 